OK, so now let's have a very quick demo of the Tableau Prep. So before we start, uh, so let's download those data from GitHub. Uh, so you should be able to see the URL on Canvas. So let's download uh, the Superstore data in two different years. And also this is the PDF data. And also this is the flight information. So let's download those data one by one. And I highly recommend that you do this one together with me uh, while you are watching this video. Uh, because that can give us a very uh, a better understanding of uh, the data cleaning um, that we just mentioned in the lecture. OK, and now you can see I have downloaded other data that it did, um, by default in my downloads folder. And I also still recommend using OneDrive as the storage. So let's go to our OneDrive. And this is our second lecture. So let's call it LEC2. And let's move the data from the downloads folder okay, uh, into our lecture 2 folder. So let's paste. OK, so that by doing that, um, uh, we will we can always find out the data uh, in the cloud. So let's open Tableau Prep Builder. So Tableau Prep Builder. Again, uh, we are I'm using the 2020.4 version. So make sure we are using the same version. Okay, uh, so that is the interface. Uh, so it is slightly different from a Tableau uh, desktop. So the first thing that we need to do is we have to connect to the data. So let's connect to data. Uh, because we're using the Excel files, so let's connect the Excel files. And let's go to our uh, the Lecture 2 folder that we just created. Um, let's first uh, load the 2016 data and also 2018 data of the Superstore. So let's open both Excel files. And you can see for both Excel files, we we, we all we do have the order um, table. So if we click that and drag that one to our view, and uh, so you can see we have this order that is in 2018. So here we have a very brief view of the data. And I want to combine the 2018 data with my 2016 data. So now if I click on my 2016 data, and I drag the order here, OK, and you can see I have order two. So now that is in orange, so different color. So tell you that they are different data set. So now we have the two tables and they have the similar structure. So if I want to combine them together, so should I use drawing or should I use union? So in this case, I will use union because they have the similar structure. So let's click this one. And now you can see you can use either drawing or union. So let's use union. OK. And now you can see that uh, we have a preview that's showing that uh, how all the tables are perfectly matched. OK, uh, so this may take a while, so you can pause the video here. OK, so now it is completed. Uh, you can see here we have preview of the data. So we have two tables and we can see they all matched pretty well. OK, so if you just want to see the uh, mismatched field, there's nothing, so that's great. Okay, so to preview the real data, so we need to add one more step. So let's say add clean step. Okay, so by adding the clean step, so we can see the overview of the data. And here we have a very nice statistics of the data. Okay, and if you click the data, so for example, if I click one data and the corresponding fields records that are highlighted in other columns. Okay, so now I'm looking at order date 
uh, in this time range, and also you can see the ship date, ship mode, are uh, all highlighted. Okay, and if I say I want to see the non data, if I click non data, and you can see the non data for the postcode uh, do exist in the other uh, columns. Okay. All right, so now let's try some data cleaning. So here you can see they have some recommendations. That's very nice. So for example, the first is that we can change the data type of zip code to zip code data type. So that is because zip, if by changing the data type into zip code, we can visualize those data on the map. OK, so let's accept that recommendation. So now you can see we have the uh, review that okay we are going to change that one to a zip code date format so from the numbers into zip code so let's apply that okay so now you can see that uh, the zip code date format is now in the zip code format okay uh, we can also exclude those non data okay and also now you can see we have a lot of non data type and you can see if we remove those non data, so how that will influence the other columns. Okay, so if you want to do that, you can exclude the non data. Okay, uh, we also have some other recommendations. For example, we can change the cities into city, we can change the, the state into state. Okay, uh, actually, we can do that manually. So, for example, city, if we click the string format. We know that is a city. However, we can change that one into uh, geographic rows into city. OK, so by doing that, we will be able to map the locations of those cities. And we can do that for the state. OK. And we can do that similar for the country. All right. OK, so that is uh, some data cleaning steps that we are doing. We have done here and we also can check the history here. So if, for example, if you made some mistake, you can always go back. OK, so for example, if you don't want the filter, you can just undo the filter. OK, and by undoing the filters, you can see we have some errors in the state. OK, so let's still uh, remove those non records. OK. OK, so what we have now is called a flow. OK, so that's a data flow. So that means uh, we can save this data flow. So let's save that one to our OneDrive folder. OK, so this we call lecture two. OK, so that means so on the flow will not save the data. The flow will save the process of the data cleaning and also data processing. So that means when you bring the similar data here next time, and you can just run those process directly. OK, so let's say we, once we are done with this data cleaning, so we can export the data. So here, let's say we want to add um, an export step. And for this export, so here you can see uh, the cleaned data. Uh, you can export that one into a file. You can export that into a database, etc. So let's export into a file, and let's click this for this output. Let's just call it uh, join. Okay. So first, let's browse where we want to save that one. Okay. Uh, so let's say we want to save that one into our again OneDrive folder. Lecture two, so let's call it join data. Accept. And you can see you can choose a format. So right now we can see we can only choose hyper. Okay. Uh, if you like, you can also choose the CSV, but I would recommend use hyper. And now we can run this flow. Okay. So now we just joined two tables or uh, union two tables. And we did some data cleaning and also we saved the result into our uh, OneDrive folder. Okay, so now let's 
uh, save this flow. So now in this OneDrive folder, we can see we have those Excel files. Those are the original data set. We have this flow files. So that means the flow does not save the data. The data we cleaned is in this hyper format. The flow is that we can simply use a flow to apply the same date process to other similar data sets. So you don't need to do the date cleaning again. All right, so let's try a drawing. So let's say we drag the order here. OK, and let's also drag the retain here. So retain means that those are those retained orders. So for the retain orders, we have an order ID. And for the orders, we also have order ID. So now we know that those two tables have different st structure. So if I, I want to combine those two tables together, I should use drawing. OK, so let's see, click this one. And now let's use drawing. And you can see here, Tableau is smart enough that they are using the old ID equals old ID, uh, so which is great. OK, so let's wait until Tableau is finished. OK, so that is great. And we can see that we have some mismatch on the left side. That is because not all the orders, orders has, have, uh, has been, have been retained. So that's, that's nice, actually. So we see old ID equals old ID. You can also change those uh, columns if they are not correct. But here, I will just keep old ID equals old ID. Uh, you can choose a drawing type. You can choose left drawing. OK, you can choose inner drawing. OK, and you can choose full drawing, so just as we mentioned. So here, let's choose inner drawing so that we will only see the, the matched records from both types. And now let's add one more step. So data cleaning step so that we can see the data look like. OK. All right. And so now we see that we have all the retained uh, orders that in different regions. OK, so suppose here I want to count that for each single region that how many orders being retained. So to do that, I need the aggregation functions. So here, let's say I want add, I want aggregate. OK, so for the group fields, I want to use the regions. OK, so you can see we have multiple regions. And for the aggregated field, I want to count the order ID. OK. So I drag out the ID here, and this will give us a count. So I can change the name. So that is a number of orders. OK, and let's preview this step. So now we can see that for different regions, that how many times that the order has been retained. So for example, Canada. OK, so that's a region that's between 0 and also 20. Uh, central US. OK, so that's a value between 60 and 80. So for more details, we can visualize that one later. OK, so here we have the regions. And let's also try a group function. OK, so remember that we can also group multiple uh, data together. Let's see here we want to click. And um, Let's see a group. Okay, group values. And so this is the way we mentioned in the lecture that we can group by the pronunciations, common characters, or spelling. So here, let's say we want to use the common characters. Okay, and actually, uh, so nothing has been changed except this group. You see this icon, clip icon. So that means uh, the Tableau automatically grouped the Southern Asia and also Southern East Asia as one group. OK, which makes sense, right? So I will accept this one. OK, and if you like, you can also add uh, output. OK, 
Uh, so save the result. So this is the final result. So this is our, uh, let's go to save that one to our uh, OneDrive folder. So let's call it, uh, this actually is drawing. So the previous one is a union. So drawing data real. <laughs> so that's a real drawing data. This one should be union the data. Okay, drawing data. Okay, uh, let's give it a different name. Okay, and if you like, you can also run this flow. So I'm not, uh, I'm not going to run it now. So let's uh, continue. So next, as I want to show you the pivot. So uh, before we do uh, drag that one to the Tableau, so let's open the flight Excel files first. Okay, so now this is the flight Excel files. So prop that's very common. So in Excel, so they have some cells that containing, you know, those unrelated, uh, they are not the data. And also we have an empty column. Okay, uh, so that is a flight data set. So let's close that one. Uh, let's also let's also open this PDF data. Okay, so that is downloaded from GME website. You can see we have the title, we have some information, and also we have the table. Okay, so those are the two data set. And let's see how Tableau is able to recognize the data structure of those of this Excel file and uh, and also on this PDF. So let's go to Tableau Prep. Uh, let's first let's add that Excel file that is a flight information. Let's open it. Uh, let's drag this one to our uh, canvas so that it resolved instance. And you can see right now the structure is a is a is a messy, right? If you remember that we just look at the data in the Excel file because they have some empty columns and they have some on um, they have some uh, uh, descriptions of the data. So that's why that by default Tableau is not able to understand the, the structure. And so now this is where we can use this data interpreter. So if we check the data interpreter. All right, so now you can see that Tableau is able to extract the data and understand the structure of the data. OK, so that is very, very nice. So now let's add a data cleaning step. So now you can see it's very nice that uh, Tableau is able to extract the format of the data, structured data. OK, so now we can see we have the number of instances that um, in different time period for each employee. However, we want to somehow to rotate the data so that we want to say that for each employee at different time period that number of instances they have resolved. So this operation is called pivot. So let's do that. So let's add one more step and pivot. OK, uh, so let's say we drag all those fields except the employee into the pivoted field. OK, and for this name, we call it date. Uh, this one will be re number of resolved instance. So I just call it number of resolved. OK, and this will be the uh, employee. OK, so let's add a new clean step. So now you can see it's very nice. We have the number of resolved instance for each single employee. And the date form is, let's convert that one into date format. OK, so that is the pivot. And also, you, you, you may notice that for the employee IDs, they have the pattern. So they have the letter and also employee number. OK, so the letter indicates the location of the employee and number is a real ID of the employee. So if we want to separate those two informations, we can use the split function. OK, so let's here, let's say we try go to split. Let's just try the automatic split. 
OK, so the first we have the letters. Those are actually locations of the employee. And here we have those numbers. So those are the employee IDs. OK, so we can call that employee ID. And since those are the uh, uh, categorical data, so I will convert that one from the number into string. OK, so which will make more sense. And we can remove this uh, field uh, because that is kind of duplicated. And now we can see which employee resolved the most number of the instance. OK, and as always, you can also add an output. So you can save the result for this pivot. OK, so that is. Right. Uh, lastly, let's see whether we can whether or not we can extract the PDF. And to be honest, uh, when I saw that function first, uh, I was uh, pretty impressed. Uh, that's pretty amazing. That's very amazing. So, because we have a lot of data that are a lot of tables are in the PDF document. And now the Tableau provide a way that we can extract those information from PDF directly. OK, so remember that we do have a table in this PDF document. And you can see that uh, right now Tableau is not able to understand a structure. So if we check date interpreter. And let's add a data cleaning step to view the data. OK, so now you can see we are able to identify the data. So we have those year of the um, of the semester, number of students on campus, off campus, on and also cam off campus, and also percentage change. OK, so because this contains a year of the data, so let's uh, let's first rename the field that is year. And let's delete the FL. So let's go here and also go to cleaning. Let's remove all the letters. So now those are the years. And let's change that one into a date format. OK. And the second one is on campus. So let's, I'll just call it on. And this is off campus. I call it off. And this one is on and off, on and off. And this one is percentage change, OK? Percentage change. OK, uh, so now this one looks pretty good. And we can also add a final step. OK, so we say we want to save that one to uh, our uh, OneDrive folder. So this is a PDF data. OK, uh, so now we have those uh, processes, uh, those data flows. So we can run those flows one by one. So let's say run the second one. And we can run the third one. And we can run the fourth one. OK, so now if we go to our uh, OneDrive folder, we can see we have the data that's being extracted. We have our original data. We also have the flow file. So that means that we can apply those same process on the other similar data set. So let's just open one. So let's open the hyper. So that will bring the date uh, Tableau desktop. OK, so that is in Tableau desktop. And you can see it's very nice. And we are able to extract the data from the uh, PDF. And we can start from here. We can have a cleaned data set. And we can start to create data visualizations.